We're going to tell great stories together. Good morning, friendos. How is everyone doing? I say morning. I say morning. Is it though? I mean, it kind of still is for me. I've been awake for three hours. So like, morning-ish time. Anyway. How's everybody doing? Ah, shit. I should have made a playlist out of this so it didn't like, 
because this is my stream safe lo-fi and if this music like if youtube keeps on going can i like put it on repeat or something autoplay is on um if if it like rolls over and starts playing somebody else's not quite stream safe music that i don't have permission to use that would be a big old bummer i don't want that miss curry you've been awake since 4 30 holy shit why <laughs> why why I don't even think Locke went to... I don't think Locke was asleep by that point in time. She's still sleeping there now. She was she was having some anxieties, so she had trouble getting to sleep last night. How's everybody doing? Miss Curry, how are you? I did. I added a countdown. That's actually why I'm 30 minutes late, is because like I was about to click go live, and I looked over at my overlay, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, I promised them a countdown. So I had to go in and download an app and put a text file back into OBS and all sorts of fun stuff. But... Uh, it's, it, it should be, it should be just dandy. It should be nice. Ah, heck. Pencil. Pencil. I need to write. I'm writing this morning. Okay. So. Hydrate. Weechi, what is up? How are you, my dude? This is water, I promise. You see? See inside? That's water. Uh, after the timer, can I show you some homebrew for you to review? Did you, uh, uh, Faye, I did not have a chance to look at your, what, 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 Kia, 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 looks like vodka to me, yeah, it is, it's a whole stein filled with vodka, and I'm expecting to drink that and still be able to write, that's, yeah, no, it's water, good old dihydrogen monoxide, Kia, how are you, Ouija, um, and Faye, yes, I, is it the same homebrew that you sent me last week? Because last week, as soon as we finished, as soon as we finished, I started writing up the one shot, which this adventure that we write today is not going to be available as soon as Monday. Just not going to be able to do that. Um, so uh, I, I would, I would love to look. It's not the same. Okay, yeah. Uh, DM it to me, and I will be happy to look at it afterward. What is the, what is the homebrew, Faye? Kia got my first haircut, or, or good, good, got a got a haircut and my first dice. That is exciting. It's called College of the Nameless. Oh, I love the name. Ironically, I love the name. Dragon! Thank you for the sub, my dragon friend. Dragon, how was your week? I skipped stream on Tuesday, and I didn't stream for long on Thursday, so I didn't have a chance to see you. How was your week? A week. Sub hype. Da 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 da. -da. Uh, mass performers with a mild druidic flair. I'm into that, Faye. I'm into that. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would love to look at that homebrew. Uh, you're welcome. It was good. A bit busy. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that. I. I feel that. I feel that in a big way. I feel that in a big, 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 big way. So, make sure my phone is on silence. Doink. How's everybody else? What did everybody have? <clears throat> Before we get started, what did everybody what did everybody have for breakfast and slash or lunch? Because it is midday at this point in time. Uh, do you know how to do stuff in Excel? Uh, a little bit. I admit, with the job that I have currently, I don't use Excel that much. When I do need to use spreadsheet stuff, I use... Um, uh, numbers you had tacos oh what kind of tacos you can't just you can't you can't just say tacos you have to elaborate is it regular beef tacos is it tacos off pastor carbon street tacos what you got i have a faction in my game called mist wardens oh oh dragon that's fun is that the game that you dm for what, 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 what? Faye has just subscribed for the first time. Welcome, Faye. Faye, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. What, 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 wait. Dragon, dragon. It, I look, I do this thing. I do this thing. And eventually I'll stop doing it. But every damn time someone gives a sub, I see the last message, which is Faye just subscribed. But really it's dragon gifting a sub to Faye. And I'm thankful for both of them. Dragon, thank you so much for gifting us up to Faye. I appreciate the hell out of it. Used to DM for... Oh. Oh. Uh, okay, so the game... Is that the game that you were getting started when you and I first met? 
Did that did that fall through? It's always a bummer when that happens, man. <clears throat> Turns out a group of adults uh, trying to get together to run a long form uh, campaign four hours a week over the course of two, two and a half, three years is a little bit difficult to um, a little bit difficult to organize. So I feel that pain. I feel that pain. Excel is so annoying. It really is. Uh, can you read the subclass before the timer starts? Faye, uh, I, I don't really want to read the... Uh, I don't like to read like a lot of stuff that people on stream cannot see before I do it, but I would uh, I would love to look at that when we finish. Um, I, will, I will look at that then. Dragon, my channel logo is based on that game. Oh, cool. Cool. That's a good channel logo too. A very good channel logo. All right. I'm hydrating. I'm hydrating. Hold on. Hydrating thrice. All right, Rad. So, also, that uh, thank you for reminding me, Faye. I'm not turning off. I, I am turning off uh, channel points just because Rupert can't pop in and give a tour. Hydrate. You guys are trying to make me pee while we're doing a thing. All right. <clears throat> um... I, I am going to turn off channel points though, just because I don't want like a, a Rupert tour or anything like that. Why, like, cause Rupert can't really pop in while we're trying to do a thing. So let me turn that off. Might as well squeeze in six. Boink. All right, so. Anybody else have anything? Uh, oh man, Rupert needs to write the one shot. Rupert, mm. That would be exhausting for everyone. <laughs> uh, that would be a lot. It would be funny, maybe? I don't know. I guess that would be up for you guys to, to decide. Did I get all the hydrates in? Let me... There we go. I think that's got to be everybody. E? What does that mean, Faye? E? Uh, can we set up a channel point dono for Rupert Makes a One-Shot? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know you guys. E just E. I don't I don't super know what that means, Faye. But I trust you. E is a vowel. It's the second vowel in the alphabet. Um in the in in the uh, phonetic alphabet. Thank the Phoenicians. Uh the Miss Wardens are basically poison water benders. Oh that's so cool, Dragon. Did you homebrew that? That's cool as heck. All righty, pool. I missed. I missed you saying hey because they were making me chug water. <laughs> What's up, pool? How you doing, pal? Ah, oh, that's so rad. That's so rad. Okay. All righty. I'm trying to think uh, if there's anything else that we need to discuss. Uh, I mean, snake nameless bards are kind of like that. Uh, snake nameless bards. I've not. I've not heard of that. Is that? Chat homebrew. You know homebrew? <laughs> Me. Um, mead homebrew? Oh, homebrew. You're talking about moonshine, right? <laughs> if, if anybody doesn't play D&D, &D, if anybody doesn't know, homebrew essentially just means, like, something that is not official Wizards of the Coast content. Something that players or DMs built for their own table. Eel, what is up? Uh, they can deal additional poison damage to their spells. Equal to their charisma modifier. Oh, that's cool. Dragon, how do how do yours work? How do the 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 poison bendy things work? Do they just have to have access to access to poison? Is that how that works? Just working. Stopped in to say hi. I appreciate it, Jedi. I appreciate you stopping in as well while you are at a shoot. Shooting a play, I believe. Thank you so much for stopping in. I appreciate it. And I hope your day is going well. Hosting Ghost, I appreciate it, Jedi. Love you. Love you, Jedi. Magistrate Idej. Long may he reign. Okay. Oh, no. Come back here, pencil. Posted in Discord. Oh, cool. Posted in Discord like like food or like a... a you're in Chicago? Oh, I was like, how did you get... 
that's I've done I it, okay for someone who has spent as much time around musical theater as me that was a stupid ass thing for me for my brain to go to I guess I'm not awake yet I guess I'm not awake yet that has to have been what happened all right <clears throat> we are about to set this timer and we <clears throat> are about to get started audience you're in the audience so you're just shooting from the audience, like the floor? <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do kind of what we did last week. We're going to get started. Um, and we're going to, if if those of you, if there's anybody joining us who was not here last week, who has not been here for a one-hour one-shot before, this is um, this is our, this is only our second, uh, second that we've done where we've had a one-hour timer. But... Um, Basically, what we do is chat and I work together and we put together a, uh, we just kind of make some tables and do some random things, toss ideas off of each other and come up with a one shot adventure uh, that anyone can run at their own, at their own table, a one shot uh, adventure using 5e rules. So it might not necessarily be uh, in Faerun or any of the, in any of the like standard things. It's, it's really just a silly game that anyone can play at their own table using 5e rules. Um, printed audience in the theater. Oh, uh, there's a city built inside a shroud of magically poisoned waterfall mist. Ah, oh, mist wardens are of a specific bloodline that are immune to the effects and therefore auto protectors of the city. Ah, oh, dragon, that's rad. I feel like you could. You need to. You need to hold on to that. I know that that's. You need to. You need to hold on to that for like a future game or a one shot or something because that's that's cool. Uh, for the mask options, there are uh, cat, bear, uh, cat, bear, deer, owl, wolf, snake. What are you talking about, mask? Faye? I saw a nice crowd. Oh, oh, so it's like a big audience. That's exciting. It's always exciting when. Um, it's always exciting, like for high school kids specifically when there's like a lot of people that are enthusiastic in the audience rather than just people who have to be there uh in the subclass oh in the subclass of are, are you talking about the, the subclass that you homebrewed okay all right y'all ready to get started lots of celebs uh good at faction making stuff yeah it sounds like it for sure for sure. All right. Y'all ready to get started? We might have to change the music ever so slightly. Well, we can hold on to... I need to start it over because inevitably what's going to happen is we're going to get started and I'll forget and the YouTube will just keep auto-playing whatever's next that I don't own. All right, so... Ready! Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, timer starting in three... Two, one, a go. So, y'all know the drill. Well, same as we did last week. Everybody name a movie, book, or TV show. And we're going to pick six of those. Tater and Smitch. Hi, hello. Hi, 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 hello. <clears throat> Everybody name a movie, book, TV show, play, whatever. And we are going to write them down. Drive, okay, the Ryan uh, Ryan uh, Gosling movie, maybe Gilmore Girls. <laughs> uh, okay, the thing with Gilmore Girls is that everybody just has to talk really, really fast. Bioshock Infinite, okay, I'm not familiar with Bioshock Infinite. I've only seen Drive once. Um, uh, the Warded Man, a book no one else has probably read. Okay, okay, uh, I'm gonna name one. Uh, first movie that I think of off the top of my head, Knives Out. Uh, the Kite Runner, Titan AE, Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> oh, Wreckage. Wreckage, you maniac. I'm going to say Knives Out. That's mine. That's my edition. Mortal Kombat, says Kia. Okay. My music went away. Interesting. Mortal Kombat. That's an interesting one. That's a very, very interesting one. Uh, why did my music stop? What the hell is going on? Uh, okay. So, Weekend at Bernie's, Knives Out. Clue. 
Okay. Clue. Maybe the musical start. There it is. Knives Out was such a good movie. Okay. Uh, okay. Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, let's see. Gilmore Girls is an interesting one. Drive. We need... Let's do... Let's get... Uh, someone said Titan AE, but I'm not super... Fa uh, Lucky. Lucky! I didn't even see you come in. Lucky, how are you? Uh, Man in the High Castle. Oh, I've not seen that. I know it's like political espionage, sort of. Uh, the Two-Week Curse. I'm not familiar with that. Um, is that a, is that a book? Howl's Moving Castle, The Castle. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we'll say, we'll say Man in the High Castle. That's a fun one. It's, I know it's like political intrigue, but we can like, Lance, what is up? It's a book. Lance, name a book, movie, TV show, whatever, what have you. This is this is already an interesting list. Like if if we roll weekend at Bernie's, I don't know what we're <laughs> Neverwhere. Oh my god, Neverwhere. Oh, that's such a good one. Oh, I love Neil Gaiman. I love Neil Gaiman with all my Naked Gun 3 and a third. Lance, you're a you're a maniac. That's the one with Pamela Anderson, isn't it? Um <laughs> Uh, people in the real world get a two-week curse that makes them suddenly aware of their stats. After two weeks, they are dropped into a 10-level D&D-style world. Smidge, give, link me up. I need to read that. I need to read that. All right. So. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Should have gone with Austin Powers. <laughs> All right, so first roll of the day. Uh, we we might actually roll two, depending. I'm not sure, and just figure out. Let's see. That is going to be uh, that is going to be two. So that is let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Mortal Kombat. Okay, drop it in my Discord. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. So this is going to be Mortal Kombat, which I think is interesting. So it's going to be a very combat heavy. Um, a very a very combat heavy um, one shot, which is interesting. What if we did uh, Mortal Com Mortal Wombat? Yeah, Mortal Wombat. Good lord. Okay, so okay, how do you guys want to eke a story out of? Okay, so uh, the the first thing that I think of is like uh, these people. Is it like everyone versus everyone else, like a battle royale sort of deal? Is it like a, a tournament sort of situation? Or do we have a party who... Do we have a, a party who is working together? Maybe like they can they can tap each other in and out. Uh, Mortal Mombat. And it's just, just a bunch of like moms. Uh, <laughs> should have gone with Inception. Oh my God. Faye, remember that for next time. Remember that for next time. Because we might be doing another one of these next week. Inception is a good one. Inception's a very, very good one. All right. So, Mortal Kombat. Uh, my my instinct. Hmm. We need a setting. Everyone, we're gonna we're gonna make another table. We need a setting. Everyone, name a place. As many as many places as you can think of. Uh, I think the Adventures Team up against the Evil World. Oh, okay. Uh, Inception would be a mind freak and a half. It really would. Um, and again, we're not basing these like solely on any sort of property, but we are like, it's good to have a, a tipping point. I'm legit looking at the 1995 Mortal Kombat plot. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of any plot with Mortal Kombat. A desert, okay. A desert, Hong Kong, okay. Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland, oh my god, a volcanic tundra. Okay. So I'm I'm kind of seeing like um I can't remember the name of the Star Wars planet, but it's 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 where Nine Numb is from. 
and it's like there's these uh, geysers, these volcano geysers. It's really dark clay. Uh, nine hells of the moon. Nine hells is fun too. Uh, <laughs> Peppa Pig word of play. World of play. <laughs> Grand Canyon. Uh, let's see, volcano city in the Feywild. That's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, wreckage says the zoo. Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> well, I do declare y'all are going to have to fight if you want to get out of here alive. Woohoo! Hey, y'all want some cornbread? <clears throat> I'm from the South. I can say that. So, uh, my kid's room is freaking Peppa Pig World to play. Oh, my God. Uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Another good one. Another good one. Okay. I think we have enough. One, two, three, four, We're five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we'll say, uh, Tater says Mortal Kombat Shiners would be the best. <laughs> Mortal Kombat Moonshiners? Yep. Um, <laughs> Appalachian Mountains. Okay. I actually need a D10 for this because you guys gave me 10 things. All right. Uh, well, there are actually levels in New York City, Mortal Kombat 3. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, so this setting is going to help us figure out what's next. That is going to be the moon. All right. The moon. We are going to go with the moon. So, Mortal Kombat on the moon. How does it? How is this gonna work? How is this gonna work? Um. Wow. Uh, lunar combat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sweet. Sold my old mixer mic to old coworker who streams. Oh, that's cool, pool. That's cool. Some nice, some nice little extra cash. Want some cornbread? I might have to make some cornbread tonight. Haven't made cornbread in a while. Don't have any buttermilk though. That might be a weird thing. All right. So Mortal Kombat on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> not ne not necessarily Mortal Kombat. Okay, so we're gonna say, what what if what if these chaotic entities have taken our adventurers, um, taken our adventurers out of out of the maybe maybe our adventurers have died or something, and uh, these chaotic entities maybe warlock patrons even. Oh, hold on, here's an idea. What if they're high level warlocks? And they've all died. They don't know each other, but they've all died. And their patrons have brought them to uh, battle on the moon. On this, like, secret, not necessarily moon base, but, like, this this otherworldly plane sort of thing on the moon. Mortal Kombat on the moon, you have uh, aliens instead of realms. Maybe. Moon is Sub-Zero's home rock thing. One small step for man. One giant KO for Sonya Blade. Pintos, though, for your cornbread. What's up, Sparkles? How you doing? Gonna be very bouncy. Yeah, it, I don't know. We might have to like tweak the gravity sort of situation. Um, so, cause like, I mean, there's there's some adventure zone that takes place on the moon, and they don't really they sort of. I, I'm sure in this particular situation, the um, some sort of magic user. Hey, dragon. Dragon, thank you for giving us up to sparkles. Sparkles, please enjoy the Wacky Wavy Inflatable Iron Floating Tube Man is next to your name, as well as uh, our super happy fun time emotes. Chef's kiss mwah, in chat, please. Which moon? Now, that's a good point. We did not say which moon. It could be Europa, or it could be our moon. Um, that's uh, We're kind of kind of venturing off into science. And this is going to be kind of story light at this point. Hey! Hey! Tater and Smitch. Thank you for the sub. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so. Do you guys like the idea of, like, say there are these, uh, like, these, these high-level warlocks. Everyone in the party is a warlock. Um, what do you guys think about that? Like, a higher-level warlock with higher HP... Uh, there's not necessarily a healer, so there needs to be a lot of like inventory management. They'll be given some um, 
they'll be given some uh, like healing potions and things like that. You like the warlock idea? <clears throat> it does. I mean, it sounds fun. Tater and Smith say Titan. Uh, I don't think it matters necessarily which moon. I think they're just on like some sort of lunar-esque landscape. And maybe there are these craters that they can fall in or whatever. Uh, I do think gravity has been altered magically. So that way it is equal to Earth gravity. World locks. Oh my god, Ouija. Uh, monks with levels of warlock, magic-based melee. Huh. That's an interesting thought. Probably a little bit complex for a one-shot, but an interesting thought for sure. Uh, so we can do higher level warlocks, and they can have access to healing potions. Um, and they can, maybe they have the ability to, maybe we give them a certain amount of gold, and they can purchase potions, whether it be, you know, potions or poisons or something, or is that too much? Dark matter mages. I mean, that's basically dark matter mages. Uh, have you guys, there is actually a 5e rule set, like a, a 5e uh, module called i think it's called dark matter but it's it's basically like a sci-fi ttrpg with 5e rules which is radical mortal kombat does have a cult aspect to it uh shang sung does have followers huh huh most interesting <clears throat> like they used to rule a planet or something like that i think i think probably what's happened is like they're they're just transported to another realm that is uh, uh, lunar in nature. So like, you know, dusty craters and whatnot. And then it's set to the backdrop of space. Like you can see off into space, you can see the world in the background. You, like you can see, yeah. Uh, I think I think that's, I think that's kind of where we go with it. Dragon, you maniac. Wah, 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 wah. Dragon, you beautiful man. Thank you so much for gifting subs. To Guillotine, Aves, and Velocidotus. I very much so appreciate that. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Friends, I'm going to need my monster manual for this one because this is going to be a combat heavy one shot. All right. So we are on the moon. These warlock, it's a party full of warlocks. They're all warlocks. So I need my uh, encounter calculator. Um, oh my God, my wife just now, Mortal Kombat on the moon, Mortal Kombat on the moon. We carry a harpoon. <laughs> oh, that's great. So... So, 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 so. Uh, our players, they wake up. Um, do we, and we can like allow the DM if, if the DM wants, they can do something like, uh, they can explain that they are, you know, they, they lose consciousness after taking, like they can give each individual, um, they can give each individual player like a reason that they died or a reason they're unconscious, but because they're unconscious now, they have to fight and make their way through this thing in order to survive. Uh, in order to survive what just happened to them. That might be kind of fun. Can we have a Desmond the Moon Bear? Desmond the Moon Owl Bear? We can have an Owl Bear fight, maybe, just for the fun of it, Ouija. Sure! Why not? It's all improv. First rule of comp or first rule of improv, yes and. Alright, I need my monster manual. One second. Alrighty, so <clears throat> our players wake up and they wake up. Where do you guys think they wake up? Do they wake up in like some sort of holding cell uh, a la Thor Ragnarok? Uh, like a warlock lunar pur purgatory? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Warlock lunar pur purgatory. That might be the name of this thing. Um, very interesting. Uh, so they come from different planes of existence all over the realms from MK. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily, like, it's not necessarily Mortal Kombat, I don't think, Lance. Like, not specifically only Mortal Kombat. I think it is, like, just the Mortal Kombat style. I think it's going to be, like, just uh, uh, a lot of encounters 
like a, a whole lot of like combat encounters, if that makes sense. You wake up in the crater they created when they teleported to the moon. Oh, that's good. You wake up in a crater. Okay. You wake up in a crater with a force field. Um, oh, that's a good idea, Dragon. So what if all of these fights take place inside craters with force fields over them? And they have to... Um, they they have to they have to go like when they finish an encounter they have to go from one crater to the next but when they do they have to make some sort of skill check or they have to roll some sort of saving throw to see if they take any sort of radiant damage uh if they're already dead they don't have to worry about breathing hmm that is a good point lance but is it are they in a have they been transported to a different realm or that is a good point that is a good point we'll put a pin in that so they wake up in a crater <clears throat> and then the first thing that happens is they are faced with an encounter we're gonna say an owl bear because uh that is what uh who said that ouija uh, are they ghosts or are they brought back to life? I think they're brought back to life. I think they are... Yeah, the moon might have breathable air. Yeah, I I, I think... I feel like just for the sake of simplicity, um, I think the physics of this are going to be... Like, they're not necessarily ghosts. They're not necessarily... Um, uh, they're, they're not... The, 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 their humanoid physics have not necessarily changed. I'm going to go get something to eat. Going to be lurking for the most part. Dragon, I hope you get something... Delicious to eat. Owl Bear, page 249 of the Monster Manual. So. Owl Bear. <clears throat> yeah, that would be uh, like. Okay. Okay. So our our characters, uh, they're in the in-between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Our characters have just woken up in this crater with a force field. So uh, they they wake up. I will say that there's probably... Um, they're highish level warlocks. So we can say four level seven warlocks, just for, just for giggles. A uh, medium encounter is 3,000 XP. And... Owl bear. So the first challenge would probably be pretty easy. We can do, like, we let's say the first encounter is three owl bears. That's a that's a pretty easy encounter. For Toxima, what is up? What is up? Um, let's see. Uh, they could be fighting to regain their soul. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. A last-ditch attempt to get out of the deal they made. Oh! Oh, that's a good idea, Lance. They are fighting for... They're fighting for their freedom. But if they're fighting for their freedom, would their patrons... Would their patrons be willing to help them? Uh, let's see. Maybe they met someone on their planet who promised them infinite power in exchange to drink some potion or something. Uh, and that's all they remember when they wake up on the moon craters with an immediate encounter. So maybe... Okay, what if the opposite, like sort of the, the inverse of what Lance said, instead of it's an opposing patron? Hmm. No, other patrons would be willing to help them. So they still have the same powers. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Hello, Fresh. Hi, hello. Welcome to the stream, Hello, Fresh. I hope you have fun while you are here. So, these, we have 38 minutes left. And this is going to be kind of a little bit more story light, a little bit more combat heavy, this encounter. So, we have, um, mainly we just have some, some math to do as far as figuring out the encounters. But, <coughs> it seems like we have the most of it. So, we, we think they, um, they had these patrons in life. Uh, figured rather than make Lance tell for me. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, these guys are just pawns of the patrons. 
Okay, you think they're pawns of their patrons? Thank you for following HelloFresh. I love that name. That name makes me so happy. Uh, please clarify. Patrons are financial supporters, uh, such as in the Hunger Games. Okay, Sparkles. Uh, I'm sorry. That is that if um, okay, patrons in the world of D and D, uh, otherworldly patrons are basically a warlock's god, so to speak. So like you have uh, warlocks are basically the exact opposite of clerics. Uh, clerics have a god that gives them their power and allows them to heal uh, and sort of you know do good in the world and. Um, at, that's just generically speaking. But warlocks, uh, they basically make a pact with an otherworldly patron who uh, is basically making a deal with the devil, essentially. Exactly. Exactly, Miss Curry. So I hope that I hope that makes a little more sense. I should have clarified that. So <clears throat> you... Let's see. So Elofresh says an opposing patron. Maybe it's a tournament, a power arc. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So I I like the idea of them maybe trying to get trying to get what if uh this setup feels more like tournament of power. Oh, she got there before me. <laughs> uh patrons bring their champions to fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um they bring their champions patrons bring their champions to fight. So it's less about like getting out of a pact and more about okay, you screwed up in life, you died, you found yourself here. Um, if you can make it out, you'll you'll have another chance at life. Yeah, I like that. And patrons have brought their champions to fight, so it's a, a little bit about, like, impressing the patron, if that makes sense. Uh, they're the things that Warlocks sign packs with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cthulhu, Essentiate Weapon, a Kraken. Essentiate Weapon. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a popular one lately. Um, so... I like that idea. Patrons bring their champions to fight. So that's that's sort of what we're dealing with here. They wake up in a crater with, I think his dragon set a force field. So they wake up in a crater with this with this owl bear. And um, let's see. With with three owl bears. And they have to they have to defeat the owl bear, and at that point. Uh, we'll say like Hunger Games style. This thing comes up. This this projection thaumaturgizes in the sky. Uh, winners get non-dispellable boons. Oh, interesting, interesting. Again, it is a one shot, but at the same time, if these people wanted to take their characters and make it, the thing about a one shot is it can lead to a full campaign. Uh, in addition, it's a selling point marketing presentation to convince uh, upcoming warlocks to choose them. Huh. That's an interesting one, Sparkles. A lot of times the way it's maybe like patrons, the way patrons work, it might be more like like an ego sort of thing. I do like that though, Sparkles. Okay. So, uh, maybe just a booming voice. Victory! Uh, but yeah, at that point, like someone comes and explains to them, like someone comes up in the sky and explains to them uh, what it is that's happening, what has happened to them. A patron pay-per-view, basically. Um, so... First encounter, three owlbears. At that point, they have to make it from one crater to the next. Uh, there. So how do you guys think that needs to happen? Do you guys think it's as easy? Like, they have to they have to get out of this force field. Do you think there's... I don't think there's air. I, I think there's, like, very much so, like, radiant damage or something that they suffer if they don't make it across in time. Uh, do we think, oh, since it is on the moon, something we can do is what if gravity inside these force fields is the same, but gravity on the outside is different. So they have to make dexterity checks in order to make it to the next uh, the next zone where they have their next battle. We have <laughs> we have Snuggles McDiggly Warp tonight on Patron TV. <laughs> Moonality. I missed Moonality. Where did Moonality happen? So what do you guys think about that? Um, when they finish one encounter, they have to make it. Uh, they have to go. They have to actually like leave the force field of safety, make dexterity checks, and like deal with uh, kind of wonky gravity to get into the next one. And then as we progress, they get further and further away. Uh, once the owlbear is dead, the force field could fall, and the next crater is open 
while all the others still have one so they know where to go next. Oh, Miss Curry, I like that. I like that. Definitely seems logical. This Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> howdy, howdy, guillotine. What's up? We are writing a D&D one shot. Um, kind of just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a fun time when we do these. How are you, Gilly? We are taking just one hour to write a whole D&D one shot, which is, it's fun. Doing great. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear life is well in Gilly land. Uh, how would Hexblade Warlocks fit in uh, while players, their patron, for example, uh, Q and I assume his mother is the form of a bow and sass. Uh, Nova and Tiangong from High Rollers. Hmm. I don't think it would be that much different, Tox. I don't think I don't think it would be that much different. Um, what? 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 Dragon! Dragon, thank you so- Dragon, you said you were gonna go- You said you were gonna be lurking, and instead you're just in here dropping gifted subs left and right. I appreciate you. Hello, please enjoy the bright green wacky zacky tube man next to your name, as well as our super happy fun time emotes. Uh, let's see, you gotta be battles to the death with souls on the line to be truly Mortal Kombat. Well, I mean, yeah, it's that's kinda what we're kinda what we're going with. Uh Faye, what kind of pizza did you get? 164? This is you lurking? What did I miss, Faye? What's 164? This is you lurking? <laughs> okay. So three owlbears, and then they have to do a uh, dex some sort of dexterity check to get to the next crater. They have a timer. So we'll say they have to do, like, uh, make it make a dex check to see if they can they can make it into the next one. The amount of subs they gifted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dragon is Dragon is a gifty, gifty maniac. Um, he, he is a... Dra Dragon's just the best. You guys, actually, while we're here, guys, Dragon, Dragon is so close to getting affiliate. If he hasn't gotten it yet, he might have gotten it. He was very close. Everybody go follow my, my pal Dragon. Excellent streamer. And uh, he actually does a lot of bilingual streams. So uh, uh, I think, uh, I believe you said your native language is Urdu. And every once in a while, he'll just go into speaking Urdu. Uh, and it's fascinating because he, like, he explains it in such a way. I don't know. It's you. Sh you guys sh go follow Dragon. Is what I'm saying. He does bilingual streams. Streams a lot of the same stuff that I stream. So if you like the stuff I stream, you're gonna like the stuff he streams. Pizza. I ordered pineapple, mozzarella, olives, feta. God, that sounds delicious. I am so into that. The combination of pineapple and feta is just fantastic. Uh, what about asteroids come crashing down a minute after the fight is over outside the force fields? Oh, Ouija. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Uh, it's just their patrons summoning them to this place, maybe for hex blades. Uh, a fragment of their weapon soul is within the place. Oh, 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 that's an interesting thing we need to keep in mind. Like the different types of uh, the different the, the different subclasses of warlock. That might be something to keep in mind. Played life. Okay, so next encounter. Asteroids come down. That's a very good idea. Asteroids come down. They have to make dexterity saving throws in order to make it across. Um, so at that point, they get to the next encounter. What is the next encounter? We're going to say, again, we've got, uh, we assume, four characters at level seven. What is the next encounter? Let's do a random table. Random monster table, 5e. Probably a little bit easier to Google it than to get out my DMG. I could get my DMG out. Hold on. Uh, okay, maybe uh, Tarkatans, Shock and Centaurs. Oh, interesting. Naming MK races here. <laughs> uh, I did. I'm addicted to it. Also ordered a stuffed crust meat lovers with roasted garlic. God, I love garlic. I love garlic. Okay. Encounters. 
what are you guys thinking needs to be the 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 next encounter for them to put up with creating a settlement meat lovers man i might have to have pizza tonight i've i've not been sure what it is I've not been sure what it is that uh, Locke and I were going to have for dinner tonight, but that sounds really, really good. I'm about to be eating like a king. Yes. You get your chomp on. All right. So next battle. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I haven't missed. Uh, increase challenge rating by two or something each time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. The challenge rating, there were three owl bears, And if we've got uh, level seven warlocks, we've got four level seven warlocks, a medium encounter, like a medium encounter is only 3,000 XP. So three owl bears would actually be an easy encounter for them. May I provide a boss? Please feel free to suggest. I'm just trying to find a... Uh, random I'm trying to find a table in the DMG what if all right screw that I am just going to uh, I feel like the boss has to be a beholder and also it's a little bit more complicated because they don't have a healer in the party so it's what we have to remember that they they don't have a healer um So they have to be, uh, maybe, maybe they like roll a, a D20 or something to see if they get access to healing potions to heal up a little bit. Um, maybe, yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Like at the end of each encounter, they roll a D20 to see what kind of healing potion they get access to. If they roll like an 18, 19 or 20, they get a, a like superior healing or something. Um, that might be something. Uh, inserts a sleeping beholder. Yeah, yeah, I feel like a beholder needs to be the last one. Lance, thank you so much for pimping my lo-fi. Uh, let's see. Can't heal via life sap. They're high level. Uh, level seven. They might, they might have life, life sap. Uh, li like, they, they might have some sort of, like, life drain, I think is what it's called. Uh, their patrons could give them if they roll a certain dice roll. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm trying to remember if a level 7 warlock has access to that. Because Q is level 7. I don't think he has access to that right now. Um, but either way, I don't think every warlock class would have access to it. So either way, we need to give them access to healing potions, and that would be a good way to do it. So next encounter. Give me a number between 1 and 330 We'll say, give me a number between 1 and 279. <clears throat> uh, does making the victor being restored to full health make it too easy? I think so, because they're all working together. 176, says Dragon. So, like, if one person wins, <clears throat> what if... What if the person who has the final blow gets restored uh, half of the damage that they lost? Sent a final uh, fin final boss you could use. Um, let's see. Oh, is that a homebrew? Faye? <clears throat> Gonna try to avoid homebrews for this because uh, people need to have access to pretty much anything. So, uh, Drake lost from Bolos. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Dragon said 176. Who's the first one? So let's go there. On 176, Hags. There are hags. So, a moon hag, which might be interesting. Uh, probably be a night hag. So we'll say uh, that'll be a that'll be a pretty tough fight. Um, so what if there was a night hag uh, who? Let's see. Night spell casting, nightmare haunting. That would be a that'd be a pretty good fight. So what if there were 
Uh, what if there were two night hags, two two sister night? Do a night hag that rides a giant wolf and wields a sword. Eldridge night hag. Ah, oh, that's kind of fun. Um, wields a sword. That that would be okay. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do two night hags, and that would be a challenge rating of uh twenty. That would be a challenge rating of thirty six hundred. So that would be. Uh, moon hags name one the cr the cr every time I see anything with a with like the the sort of suffix in a tour I just hear uh, dr doofenshmirtz um the crushing a tar from uh, uh Phineas and Ferb okay we only got 22 minutes left so we need to we need a boogie so uh two night hags and then the same deal it happens after that what if we have wait for it a dragon so do you think a dragon is quite a bit, but it might be fun. Uh, Minotaur Skeleton Warriors. Minotaur Skeleton Warriors. Interesting. An owlbear. Perry the owlbear. <laughs> oh, there you are, Perry the owlbear. All right. <clears throat> so, two night hags on the next one. Next encounter. Everybody. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. A lunar dragon. Ah, we might have to do that. So, the next encounter... We're, we're already, like, with two encounters in a one-shot, we're already diving pretty pretty deep. Like, this is already going to be a couple hours. So, the next one... Should the next one be a Beholder? Is it too much to have them fight a Beholder and a Dragon? Dragon! Dragon, thank you so much for gifting that sub to Toxima Toxima. Please enjoy. Wacky, wavy, inflatable, arm flailing tube man next to your name, as well as our super happy fun time emotes. All sorts of dragons. Adult white dragon. Uh, what is the most difficult? Encounter tables. Uh, the most difficult, like, I'm trying to find a dragon because a deadly encounter for a group of four with seven uh, Lunar Dragon is a referee. Compete with an oversized referee shirt. <laughs> Good lord. Swarm of Winterlings controlled by a death tyrant. Uh, bleach bones might match the lunar surface. Oh! That's a cool idea. So, uh, Minotaur Skeleton Warriors. Okay, hold on. Let me let me remember that. Uh, let's see. Seeing as it's on the moon, how about a celestial like a cult, uh, like a like a key ren? I, I read that as cult because I've got wow on the brain. Um, so... Da, 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 da. Need to start this over because it's about to go into another playlist. Even better, a fallen Kieran. So, that is that is a cool idea. Like a fallen Kieran. Uh, let me see. What is the but? Okay, so a fallen Kieran. Hold on. You could use, you could use a blue dragon wormling template for a lunar dragon. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I like that and the Kieran idea. Okay, hold on. Give me a, give me a second. Uh, we might do that instead of doing a beholder at the end. I mean, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. So, yeah, we could do like a fallen Kieran who is a ninth level spellcaster that i mean a, a kieran is basically like we would have to nerf it because a kieran is 100% like that is a deadly encounter that is the boss um so you said a blue dragon hello Trying to find that stat block. Here in ninth level, have true resurrection. Silver dragon. Oh, where the heck is it? Where the heck is it? Okay, blue dragon as a template. 
Ah, guys, a blue dragon. An ancient blue dragon, it would... Hold on. So an ancient blue dragon, an adult blue dragon, a young blue dragon would be the only thing that we could do that would be, like, even remotely fair. And that would almost be a deadly encounter. Um, so we could do a, a young blue dragon, like, as a, as a template. But at the same time, for, like, a, a lunar dragon, I do like that. A werewolf blade slinger. That's an interesting idea. 163 and Volos. Uh, I don't have Volos, actually. Uh, that's that's the one that I, that's one of the ones that I don't have. I've got uh, I've got Tasha's digitally, and then I've got the big three, but I don't have Volos. Um, so I don't think we have to use a template for like a lunar dragon. I think we can just do a young blue dragon, um, and that might be like. Let's see. Oh my God, werewolves uh, stuck as werewolves because they're on the moon. Oh my God. Oh my God, werewolves. Okay. 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 There's there's a whole idea. Uh, let's see. Let's. What if we did? Da, 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 da. We might. We, I think we're gonna use the Kieran, like a fallen Kieran. Um. A fallen Kieran, as like the. Uh, the like boss battle, and then the next. This one's gonna be some. The the third encounter is gonna be werewolves. Uh, prepares to yeet my copy of Volos. Are uh, ready to catch it. Um. So we got 15 minutes. We got 15 minutes. But that's okay because we're just preparing a bunch of encounters. Uh. So let me let me look at the werewolves. Man, I do love the idea of dragons though. I do love the idea of, like, having to fight a dragon in this one shot. Hmm. Moon wolves. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Werewolves, werewolves, werewolves. What page are you on? Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Werewolf 211. Power word kill. Who's got power? Do let's see. Who has power word kill? Fallen Kul Kulturian probably had power word kill instead of true resurrection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Faye, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Two eleven. So we can we can like we can tweak that a little bit and give them power word kill. That would be fun. Werewolf. All right. So a werewolf. Um, werewolf gun. So that's this would be an encounter with several um, several werewolves instead of just a couple. So it would be uh, fudge the stats. Dragons aren't supposed to live on the moon, so it's sickly. Hmm. Okay, we'll figure that out in a second. We'll figure that out in a second. But I, I do love that. So okay, werewolf uh, three challenge rating seven hundred. So in order for this to be a hard encounter, seven hundred. Let me do that. Now. Um, 4,500 divided by 700. Let's do seven werewolves, and that would be technically a difficult encounter. <clears throat> now, so the same thing happens. Asteroids, yada, 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 whatever. Now we have to decide if we want the final battle to be a Kirin, like a fallen Kirin, or a dragon. I'm into. I love the idea of like a Kieran having power word kill instead of um, instead of true resurrection, but at the same time, fighting a dragon is. I mean, it's it's what everybody wants in D and D anyway, you know. Um, <clears throat> or like a beholder, which a beholder is ten thousand XP, so that would be like a lot anyway. Oh, uh, let's see. Pack of moon wolves being driven mad by being on the moon. That is, Elo, that is a genius, genius idea. Uh, so, let's go look at that blue dragon again. We have 14 minutes, and I think we'll finish it. I think we'll be just dandy. So, pit fiend, ice devil, pit fiend, young red shadow dragon. Bum, 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 bum. I'm trying to figure out what would 
Ancient Black Dragon. Adult Black Dragon is 11,000. So, okay. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. So we could do an, an adult blue dragon, but what could we do to nerf it a little bit? Because like I like the idea of a Kieran, and I like the idea of an adult blue dragon for this. Um, but we would have to nerf Kieran anyway. Well, actually, no, we wouldn't have to nerf Kieran because that's 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 pretty well within the range. Uh, like it's a deadly encounter anyway, but. So with an, with an adult blue dragon, it would be something like, um, uh, we could, what we could do is we could take away the adult blue dragon's legendary actions. So instead of, uh, instead of having three legendary actions, three whole legendary actions, um, including detect, tail attack, and wing attack, uh, we could take those away as well as legendary resistance, because the dragon is sort of out of its. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Moon has werewolves. What? <laughs> Moon has werewolves. <laughs> oh my god, I need that. Uh, we could just go insane and make it a fallen culture and commanding dragons on the moon. Good lord, that would be bonkers. Okay, so. I think the only way to figure this out is to roll. Uh, because I love both ideas, but the way that we could make an adult blue dragon work is just by nerfing legendary resistance and legendary actions. So I'm going to roll a d20. 1 through 10, we do a fallen Kieran. Uh, we, <laughs> we could just go insane, but that would like there would be absolutely no way for anyone to win that. And that's that's just too... That's too bonkers. Like, I would feel bad about that. It's almost as bonkers as a beholder. Yeah, a beholder. I mean, we would have to nerf some, some, uh, some, like, lair. I think beholders have lair actions and stuff. I've never actually fought a beholder. I, uh, this is a story for another day, but I did fight some, like, plant zombie beholders that our DM totally, totally trolled us with. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, a beholder, I mean, that's 10,000 XP. So that's an, a, a group this size, for those of you who don't know, a group this size, uh, four level seven warlocks, a deadly encounter is te technically 6,800. Um, so, moon hobo blessed by an eldritch god. <laughs> moon murder hobo. Um, fight on. So, although death tyrants exist, that's true. We're going to nerf a lot here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that that's the thing with... And, like, obviously, any DM who runs this is going to have the ability to nerf and just play with this however they want because it's a one-shot. That's the beauty of a one-shot. You can just be rambunctious. You don't have to worry about long-term consequences with a campaign or anything like that. You can just be rambunctious and rowdy and just silly with your friends. Going to nerf so hard we might get into copyright, copyright infringement. Not nerfing if it's homebrew. That's fair. That's fair. All right, so... One through 10, we're going to do a Fallen Kieran. 11 through 20, we're going to do uh, an Adult Blue Dragon slightly nerfed. And that is going to be a 12. So, Adult Blue Dragon, it is. Nerf or TPK. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, I mean, again, it's a one-shot. So, okay, so what we're going to do is Adult Blue Dragon... And um, we're going to nerf the legendary resistance and the legendary action. So that way the yeah moon dragons. So that way the, okay. So you guys actually want to make this like, what if like, there's no, there's no gold on the moon for a dragon to hoard. So that makes it, that makes it pretty wild. Um, we doing dragons boys. Okay, so let's see. Moon cheese, still yellow. <laughs> That's fair, cannon fodder. Cannon fodder, I don't, I don't believe I welcomed you to the stream. Welcome to the stream. I sure hope you have fun while you're here. Moon dragon, bottom text. Uh, fly me to the moon. Uh, hordes bones of defeated warriors. Oh. 
How? <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. So the final crater, we got eight minutes to play around here. So the final crater, they make it all the way over during an asteroid field, all that fun stuff, yada, yada, yada. Uh, they actually find, um, do you think like the dragon breaks forth from under the ground? Do you think that might be a fun thing? Or do you think the dragon might is maybe summoned? What if the dragon is like summoned from a different plane of existence? The same way that our adventurers were in the beginning. So, like, that implies that adventurers someplace have defeated this dragon and brought this dragon here. Th that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the reason these warlocks are here, uh, this full party of warlocks, by the way, uh, the reason all of them are here is because um, their patrons brought them here upon death. So, uh, hordes, asteroids, <laughs> that'd be fun. Small, cr small crater with a large crater full of bones. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay, so here's the scene that I'm seeing. They make it across to the crater, down to seven and a half minutes. They they make it across to the crater, uh, nerfed because uh, a previous fight, it was banished to the moon. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. So, okay, they're in this crater. It's a very deep crater. They have to like slide down. They might even have to make a, um, they might even have to make like a, uh, strength, like they might have to make some kind of saving throw as they slide down this crater. Uh, Bone Dragon on the Moon, thank you for the follow, Cannon Fodder. Guys, by the way, we got some new friends in here. I do want to tell everyone that I am the Dungeon Master for the Secret Adventure Society, which is a uh, stream, a D&D stream. It's a homebrew, a homebrew game. Uh, every other Wednesday, we play at twitch.tv slash It's It's a, it's just fun. It's very fun, and it's the player's the players are so much better than I am, if that makes sense. They they got into such good role play in the last session. I I actually cried. Like it was so good. Where I'm so proud of them for every the stories that they're telling. So if you like D and D, if you're having fun here, maybe consider uh, going and checking our stuff out on YouTube. We're only on session. We did session 17 this past Wednesday. So. If you're interested, you like what we're doing here, maybe go check out the previous sessions on YouTube and maybe think about watching us live as well. Uh, Acrobatics DC 13. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So when they get to the final creator, um, DC 13 acro in order to like not take any damage as they're falling uh, because they do have to slide all the way down. So... Uh, what if they don't have to defeat it? What if they just have to find an object in a bone stack? That's a good idea, Lance. So they like they can defeat it, and trust me, there will be players who will want to defeat it. If that's the case, if that's the case, I don't think we nerf it. If they have the ability to get away from it without... Yeah, if they have the ability to get away from this dragon without defeating it... I think I think we keep legendary resistance and legendary actions. What do you guys think about that? So <clears throat> they slide down. They see these almost like uh, uh, almost like in the Chamber of Secrets when Harry and Ron slide down in the thing. They land on all the bones. Uh, Ello Fresh, you think it's a good idea? I love it. Um, okay, so. They slide down, there's all these bones everywhere, and then there's this crater off to the side. Goon! Yay! Goon, you beautiful bastard. Guys, Goon is... Goon is the reason I, I love D&D in the first place. Goon is the person who got me into D&D. Ozman, Britta, 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 Goon! You beautiful people, you. Uh, let's see, Ranger Goon. Ranger Goon. Go follow Ranger Goon. He was last seen playing Pokemon. I believe he's doing a Nuzlocke. Only four more minutes. We got time, Faye. We got time. I think we're good. We're on the last encounter, so we're going to be fine. Uh, Goon, Brenna, everybody, what we're doing, we have developed this encounter. Kind of like a Mortal Kombat sort of situation. Um, it is a party entirely made up of warlocks, which is, I guess, a kink that I have as a DM. I like to see players consisting only of one class. So, uh, upon death, all of these warlocks' patrons brought them to the moon, and they found themselves in this crater, and they have to go through all of these encounters and make it from one crater to the next. It's a party of four level seven warlocks. Uh, so they have to make it from one crater to the next, and they've got all these encounters. They don't have healers, but 
the war, the the uh, player who lands the the killing blow of a monster, or maybe of the last month, the player who lands a killing blow on a monster gets restored to half health at the end of each encounter, and they also get to roll and they might be presented with potion. They roll a d20 and they might get uh, potions of healing, minor healing, superior healing, whatever. Um, Faye, thank you for the biddies. Thank you for the bits, bits, bits. I appreciate that a whole bunch. So we're down to three minutes. Kink, come on, baby. Let's make a pact. <laughs> yeah, warlocks, bro. Okay, so um, in the final encounter, they're going to be trying to... We need we need the item. Morgan wants in on this. Morgan, this this encounter was made for Morgan. She is a fighter, but let's make a, let's make a warlock Morgan. I would love to see that. So... Uh, she can talk to her Minotaur buddy. Backstory stuff. Okay. Uh, Warrigan. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay. So we need an item because in the final encounter, they're going to be fighting an adult blue dragon. And that is way more powerful. There will be a TPK. We thought about nerfing legendary resistance and legendary actions to make it a bit more even. But the problem with that is uh, Lance had the idea of maybe they have to find some sort of, some sort of item in piles of bones while there is an encounter going on and they can find I'll say with like if they can get away with a DC 17 they can find this item that will teleport them back to uh, teleport them back to their home world amulet of pure good goon said it it's there so they have to find an amulet of pure good if they can find it with a DC 17, they will all be transported. Uh, talisman, not amulet? Okay. Uh, or, here's a question, because we all like chaos. Do we want everyone in the party to have to find their own? Do we want everyone in the party to have to find their own? Maybe there are, uh, there are the, like, the same amount of amulets as there are party members. So everyone has to find their own meaning when one person transports away, the other three are left to fight this dragon with down one party member. Is that too chaotic? Uh, can you read the subclass after the timer? And they sh there should be only one amulet. Uh, maybe the talismans are relative to their patron. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So uh, everybody, you all think only one, uh, maybe a mystical bone flute. <laughs> Play it to calm the dragon. Um, I like that too. I like that too. Uh, we'll, we'll let's make that optional. Let's make like a mystical bone flute optional if the DM wants to do something like that. But uh, as far as everything else goes, if the entire party, if they find an amulet, they are transported back. Uh, one, but Langoliers rules. What does that mean, Goon? Uh, so one person has to stay behind. Oh. One person has to stay behind and finish the fight or die. Ah, so like one person has to decide, sacrifice themselves. Okay. Okay. All right. So, but I mean, we got it is why pure good. So yeah, one person has to sacrifice himself so the other three can get away. Guys, we're done. We're done. That's it. That is our second, uh, second one hour one shot that we have done. Congratulations, everybody. Good job. I'm proud of Moon Wolves. Guys, all right, so let's go through. Why is it pure good? Is is why pure good? Can you read it? Faye, uh, I will, I'm not going to read it on stream. I'll read it after stream, I promise. Um, Woohoo! So, here's the encounter. Or here's the adventure. A group of four level seven warlocks. I would play it. It's, I mean, it's, that's the beautiful thing. We did it, you beautiful chaotic neutrals. Seventh level warlocks cast banishment. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Hmm. Hmm. Goon, uh, Q is level seven, correct? Are we going to see this played? I don't know. We might. Brenda, thank you for the file. Thank you. I love you a whole bunch. Um, so, but with banishment, there's all sorts, there's like saving throws and stuff. And I believe... Yeah, uh, an adult blue dragon has legendary resistance. So, Oz man, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, he does indeed have banishment. Okay, cool. That frightens me. 
as a DM, um, but I love it. So what is the, let's see, uh, he banished a butterfly. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, I love you, too. That's, uh, I don't know why I wasn't. Brenna, it's, look, I have been friends with people. There, there was, I believe it was Retrocade. I was friends with him for six or seven months, and I looked up, and I was not following him. So it's just, it's a thing that happens. Don't, don't even fret. Don't even worry about it. Don't you, don't you, don't you lose no sleep over it. Uh, so the problem is I see the entire party just casting banishment on things and increasing the chance. Okay, so what if we take banishment away from them? I mean, it's, it's that, that poor person. Proof, butterfly, poof. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> we can just take banishment away from them. Like that would be, or just make it like, make their save DC a lot higher. Um, there are there are ways around it, but like we can just take banishment away from them. But at the same time, look, they're not going to get it back. So, if you've got four level seven warlocks, <clears throat> an adult blue dragon has legendary resistance three times a day. So, an adult blue dragon can just choose to not be banished. Uh, dragons have a decent charisma score too. So yeah, it's like there's there's I I think. The things that are in place, I think that's going to work because they might try to do, uh, like they're. It's not like they're going to have time. They're not going to be able to take a long rest. They, they're not even probably going to be able to take a short rest. Um, we didn't, we didn't figure out how to work that in for them. But like they're going to be getting healing. Uh, they're going to be getting healing potions and healing, but they're going to have to manage their. Um, they're going to have to manage their resources in a pretty big way. So. Maybe, maybe with, um, that's, that's probably one of the things that we can do is, uh, in addition to getting half health back, the person who lands a killing blow on a creature can also get, um, uh, half of their expended spell slots back. Goon, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you for the lurk. I love you. Uh, gotta go put together an office chair. Oh, that's so exciting. I forgot you got an office chair. Oh, that's so exciting. That makes me happy. So we'll say that too. We'll say that the person who lands the uh, killing blow on the final, uh, the final standing creature in an encounter gets not only half of their um, health back, but half of their expended spell slots. I like that. So that's what we got. So so far, they wake up on the moon. Uh, all of these warlocks have probably just died in battle in their home realm in like on earth so they wake up in this crater on the moon and they have three owl bears that attack them immediately uh warlocks only need short rest for spell slots anyway okay well they're not they're not really gonna have time for short rest because as soon as they finish a fight this force field is going to go down so uh the force field goes down and they have to make it to the next one or risk taking damage uh how many level four spell slots does the seventh level warlock have I think just one. I think just one. I can pull up Q's character sheet real quick. Yeah, so if Morgan dies, she's going in this. <laughs> I I mean, I would... Not even just Morgan. Bruna, I want to see you play this. Because, like, this is your shit. Like, the, the sort of, like, combat-heavy uh, uh, resource management sort of stuff. I feel like you would kick ass at this. Cast all their spells at the highest level. Um... Are you saying, oh, they do. That's right. That's right. I remember that. So all of their spells. So how many spell slots do they have? Let me pull up. I've got Q's character sheet right here. Um, I've never played a warlock before, so that's the kind of detail that slips away from me. <clears throat> ba -da -ba -ba. And again, the timer's off. We've got the adventure written, so like we're all good. Uh, let's see. They have... Uh, looks like only two spell slots. Yeah. It looks like... Because, uh, yeah, Q is level 7. He's only got two spell slots. So that's something to keep in mind. They have a lot of damage that they can deal. But they've only got two, two packed spell slots. So I feel like that'll prevent it from getting too uh, too wild. 
Uh, so up to eight banishment chances provided no spells are expended before them. But that's the thing. Spells will be expended. Uh, and we're only going to give them, like, they only have the chance to get one of those uh, spell slots back per encounter. And that's only the person who lands the final blow on the final standing creature. So I feel like that's, I feel like that's still pretty tough. Uh, I hope it's not too tough. But again, that's what playtesting is for, I suppose. Um, so, and this is the type of, this is the type of adventure that I feel like there's not much story going on. It's just combat. So I feel like, like, Brenna is in here right now, but I feel like she, it would still be an exciting adventure, even though she knows how it begins and ends, you know? Um, so that's, that's exciting for me. So that's, that's kind of why I was glad we rolled up Mortal Kombat, like as the sort of, not necessarily the basis, but sort of the vibe, for lack of a better term. <clears throat> a warlock only campaign would be fun. Warlocks are fun, man. And they're wild. <clears throat> okay, so they wake up in a crater. Three owl bears attack them. They have to defeat the owl bears, um, and that's a that's a pretty that's that's only a medium a medium difficulty encounter. So after that, they're uh, they're in this crater with a force field. This force field drops, and this um, uh, asteroid like like comet shower begins, and they have to make it. Uh, they have a finite amount of time to make it from crater A to crater B and they risk taking, uh, they have to make like some dexterity checks and they risk taking damage from the asteroids as well as radiant damage. Um, but pretty, you know, pretty low to start with. And then they make it to the next crater and there they have to fight two night hags. So sort of the same situation. They fight the two night hags and this? the entire party has to continue on. Um, force field drops, asteroids come in. Oops, all warlocks. Plus, I'll forget, because Swiss cheese brain. Uh, well, I mean, that is that is understandable, Brenna. That is understandable. I, too, have Swiss cheese brain. But, guys, Swiss cheese is so good. Like, we shouldn't say Swiss cheese brain is a bad thing, because, like, the Swiss cheese is delicious. I'm passionate about it. Anyway, they fight two night hags. Force field drops. Asteroid shower. And then they move on to the third one. This is where it gets a little tough. In the third one, there are seven werewolves, which is funny, as Lance and L.O. pointed out, because seven werewolves that are on the moon. So that's a fun thing. So they have to fight these seven werewolves. And that's a pretty, I think that's nearly a deadly encounter. But it, that, that, is a, that is a hard, technically a hard encounter. Uh, again, same thing. Force field drops. They might get health back. They might get healing potions, whatever. They move on. And then in the final encounter, they have a uh, an adult blue dragon. And they get into this last crater, and there are these piles of bones where this dragon has, like, destroyed adventurers for centuries. Um, and they can fight this blue dragon, but they are told that there is an item deep within this these piles of bones. There is one item, as, uh, a, as Goon said, a talisman of pure good. So they have to find it. And that will transport three people away, uh, away back to their home. So uh, only three people, one person has to sacrifice themselves. So that's another thing that's going on while this adult blue dragon is attacking them. It's a pretty high DC. Actually, we said 17 investigation. <clears throat> I would say 17 investigation with this advantage because you are being attacked by a dragon. No dogs on the moon. No, I know there's no dogs on the moon. That's been established, but there are dragons on the moon. At least this moon. So, uh, they have to roll a DC 17 in order to find this talisman of pure good with disadvantage because they're being attacked. Do you guys think that's hard enough or should it be a higher DC? Cosmic Borkers. Whiff, whiff. Do you guys think 17 with disadvantage is difficult enough for a boss encounter? Four, like, keep in mind, four level seven warlocks. All looking. Seems pretty difficult. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, all warlocks are a patron of Death Goddess, so they're just trying to be the one left behind. <laughs> oh, that's some... Um, that would be some chaos. That would be some chaos. The chaos is fun. Or, guys, I think this is a fun... I think this is a fun little adventure that we got. A fun little one-shot. Um, I think 
I think Miss, Miss Curry actually came up with a name for it, and I think a lot of you were not in here yet. But uh, Miss Curry came up with, I don't think she meant for it to be a name, but I love it so much that that's what we're going to name this. Warlock Lunar Purgatory, uh, I think is what we're going to call this. None of them will have high intelligence anyway, right? Probably, probably not. Most warlocks use intelligence, not necessarily as a premier stat. Uh, warlocks have an eldritch invocation called Tomb of Levistus. Oh, Elifresh is my GM, just in case you were curious. I got to deal with this at the table. <laughs> I, Elifresh, I didn't get to tell you personally, but the, um, the maps that you made last week after the one-hour one-shot that we did last week, that fucking chaos, I, those maps made me, they filled my heart with glee. And I'm so happy uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you made those. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I don't want to, I don't want to, you guys know, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. So, is that it? I think we're done. I think this is, this is a pretty wild, a pretty wild, very fun encounter. So, let's close the book on it. That's so exciting. Guys, thank you so much. I love all of you guys. Whether you have been in here the entire six months I've been streaming or uh, whether you just found the stream today. Thank you so much for joining us for this one hour one shot. I will be writing this up and I will be putting it in Discord, in Locke's Discord, uh, which I need to get an appropriate link for because the link that I have in my bot is broken. So let me do that. Um... Uh, if you, I will be writing this up and I will be putting it in Locke's Discord. I do not have my own Discord. I use my wife's. Um, so if you want to join the Discord, you'll be able to access it there. It'll be a few days before I get the chance to write it up. And if you did not see this whole session, uh, I will be putting it on YouTube on Monday. So uh, you can find it over there as well as the lo-fi playlist that we're listening to right now and uh, a few other, few other things, including the... Um, one hour one shot that we did last week that was loosely based on the movie Airplane which was a wild time and that one is written up and you can find it already in Locke's Discord so uh, there's all those important things what else needs to be talked about as a reaction a warlock can summon a tomb of ice giving warlocks are wild man giving them 10 temporary HP per level 70 temporary HP if they come incapacitated Speed of zero and invulnerability to fire damage. Yeah, I don't feel bad about giving them a dragon now. This is becoming one of my favorite streams of the week. Thank you for this. Lance, thank you for coming, man. When I started doing these, I was like, is anybody going to care about these? But I, I thrive on this type of energy, just like bouncing ideas off of each other and coming up with wildness. So uh, this is also becoming my one, one of my favorite streams of the week. And I, I would like to do them every week. I don't know that I can commit to that. But right now, I'm just like, man, I'm already looking forward to next week. Somehow. It's... So, I'm, I'm very glad you guys enjoy it. And, you know, let me let me know if you guys enjoy it for me to do it. If you enjoy it enough for me to do it weekly, I would absolutely consider doing it weekly. This is our second in a row. So, there is precedent for that. So, um, I believe that's where we're going to end for the day. Because I need to... Uh, I need to step away and maybe figure out what we're going to do for dinner. But guys, thank you so much for joining me. We are about to go raid someone. Who are we going to raid? I have a feeling. Oh, we're going to raid Steve-O. Steve-O is streaming. Steve-O uh, uh, Gutter Nerds, who is on the Secret Adventure Society. He plays Pierce on the Secret Adventure Society. By the way, Steve-O had such a good roleplay moment. Steve-O and Locke both did. They had such a good roleplay moment in the last session that I gave them DM advantage. Uh... Uh, DM inspiration, I should say. I love you, Brenna. I love you. And Brenna, if I, I don't know, I don't know what your plans are, but like, if you want to like hop in Discord and hang out later, I would be totally down for that. Um, but guys, thank you. Yes, Chef's Kiss and Chat. You guys are beautiful with your wild ideas for fun stuff that we can make one shots out of, and it makes me happy. Uh, but yes, like I said, we're going to raid Stevo. If you do not follow Stevo, please do so. Uh, because the man is the salt of the earth. And I can say that with absolute confidence. I, I, he's, he is the absolute salt of the earth. Something. 
uh, yeah, something happened. Uh, Every every week, I'm reminded just how good of a friend Stevo is, and how good it is to have a Stevo in your corner. So please follow Stevo. Um, maybe even give him a sub if you got some money hanging around. He, I think he's trying to get to a sub goal. So you beautiful chaotic neutrals. So yes, we are going to raid Stevo. Uh, excuse me, sir. I identify as LN. Thank you very much. What LN? Uh, lawful neutral. I was like lunar neutral because that's where my brain is because we've been on the moon all day. Um, so, again, if you don't follow Steve-O, please do so. Uh, don't forget, this coming Wednesday, uh, for the Secret Adventure Society, we have a roundtable spilling the ale with several members of the cast, not just me and a couple of people. There's going to be several members of the cast on the show. So, uh, that should be a very, very, very fun time, especially after the past few sessions where we've had, uh, we've had some, had some stuff going down. Lunar neutral, yeah, that's, I, I think the surface of the moon is pretty neutral. Uh, <laughs> Ah, oh, what else is going on? Uh, don't forget... Um, man, I've pimped all my stuff all day. And, like, Lance has been pimping my lo-fi stuff that you're hearing in your earballs. So, um, yeah, I don't have anything else to tell you guys about. So please, like I said, please follow Steve-O. Please be safe. Um, be safe. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Guys, hydrate. I'm out of water to hydrate with. Actually, no, I'm not. Hold on. Make sure you stay hydrated. Take care of your brains. It's hard, like life and stuff. So just make sure you're taking care of yourselves. And know that I love you very much. My timer is running out, so uh, I'm going to click raid now. I love you. Say hi to Steve-O.